Hello, this is Mark Lingwood in the Chemistry Department at St. Mary's College of California, and I'm here to show you how to put together your colorimeter. And if you're not in one of our classes this semester, um, also in the video you can figure out how to build a colorimeter according to the plans that we've developed. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is open up the bag. So in here we have the cuvettes, which we'll use for putting our samples in later. We have the Legos and electronic bits, which we're going to start with first. We have the multimeter. And we have the dye solution. All right, so starting with the bag of electronics and Legos first, in here we have the essence of the entire colorimeter. We have the battery that's the power source, so I'm going to open that up first. We have the LED that's the light source, which is in this little baggie. And we have the photoresistor, which is the detector. You have two photoresistors in your kit, honestly because I was worried that one of them wasn't going to work. So that's why you have two. The LEDs are a little more rock solid, so you only have one of those. So the LED generates light when it has an electrical current going through it. And so you can kind of just slide it on either end of your coin cell battery, and it'll produce light. Awesome. So this is your colorimeter. You have a light source. You have a detector. We're going to attach the detector to our multimeter, which is going to measure resistance. And we put our samples in the cuvette in the middle and see how much light is absorbed. Now we just need to put it in a box, basically. So the first thing is leave this attached and running while you're doing the rest of the steps. Because when the battery is brand new, the current output changes much more quickly, and that's not so helpful for trying to do spectroscopy. And so we want to let it get past that. So once it has run for a little while, then the output changes more slowly with time, and that's where we want to be. So we'll just let that sit there while we do the rest. We're going to start with the LEGO base plate. Onto it, we will put this 3D printed insert, which all that does is it holds the cuvette nice and snugly because the cuvette is a little smaller than a 2x2 two two Lego square. So that's all that's going to do. We're going to put that in first. Behind it, we'll put the 2x2 two two Lego brick. And so that just sits right behind it. And then we can put not one of the black ones if you don't have them all black colored. Uh, we'll put a 4x4 four four brick right along the front and then some. I called it a 4x4 four four brick, my apologies, a 1x4 brick along the front. And then we'll put some other 1x4 bricks around and make our first layer. All right, so now we're going to think about how we put the electronics in here. And so the LED is going to go in the front, and then our detector goes in the back. So the LED will eventually go in this Lego, the one with a single hole in it. And so that goes in the front right here. And then the detector goes in here, and the Lego brick with two holes in it. And the reason for that is because you can kind of fit the detector nicely across the two holes like that, and it just kind of sits and is held nicely in place. And then you have one wire coming out of each hole in the back. So that's how that's put together. And then I kind of hold my thumb on the on the photoresistor, the detector in the front, and then while I'm pushing on it, I will bend the leads to the side, just so that they stay kind of nice and tight and your photoresistor doesn't wiggle around, which will change your output when it doesn't need to. And then that goes and slides right here. You notice there's a hole in the 3D printed insert where the photo detector goes. And the benefit of that is so that when you put the cuvettes in and out, you don't smash the detector, which would not be very helpful. And then take the weirdest colored Lego you have, and I use it to kind of squish the back. And so I like to pull this tight, too. And so that kind of squeezes the leads and everything and keeps it nice and tight. Note this Lego is not going to sit flush. There's a tiny little gap right in here. And that's OK, because we're not building anything else on top of it. Now the next pieces we need to do involve just building a box around the rest of it, basically. and so. This layer here also doesn't really matter what color it is, because all of the light is contained inside the 3D printed insert and, the, um, and these front and back pieces, which are black. I realize I haven't mentioned why a black piece is useful. 
I'm kind of worried about if you had like a red piece right here, that then that might also absorb some of the light. It might not be a big deal because that'll be constant and you might have some offset in your calibration curve, but we'd like to avoid it. So when possible, use the black Legos and put them close to your light path. And so in this layer, now our third layer, this actually will be really close to the light path. So we put one by four black pieces across we put a one by two black piece here and another one by two black piece that goes right here. And then now we keep building. So I'm gonna put another one by four here and another one by four here. My overall idea just for strength is I like to build them kind of alternating where the one by fours are. So to go back to this layer, the fourth layer, I'm gonna put the one by fours in different spots than they were on the layer below. And then the one by twos kind of sit in here to fill it. So now here we are, we're working our way up. And then the one by fours go here on the next layer. And now I ran out of black colored Legos, which is fine because we're pretty far out of the light path by now. And then one of these sides, and it doesn't matter which one, it just gets a single one by two Lego. And then there's not a one by two Lego on the other side. And that's so that it, you have a nice little place to grab the cuvette. So ultimately the cuvette's gonna go in here and you need to be able to get it out. And I kind of slip my finger in this little spot to kind of help get it out. You don't need that, of course. You can put a brick here if you want. Um, I just like, I, help, I think it's more easy, easier even. Okay, so that's the Lego construction. Another thing you'll need to do is make the lid. So this piece of cardstock, just bought it on Amazon. It's pretty straightforward cardstock you make a crease in it like that and then try to make it at a right angle because it's going to sit right here when you do your experiments and you don't want it kind of floating up and off so you want it to kind of sit there nicely since it's so far from the light path it's not a huge deal if it lets in a little bit of light but it does help to keep it from changing if you stand over it and block the overhead light from getting in so this helps Okay, so that's ready to go. So now we're going to take our LED and then just jam it in this hole right here. They happen to fit nice and snugly, and you can unplug it from the battery for now. They happen to fit nice and snugly, and you, you can wiggle it in there till it's tight. You don't need to utterly cram it in there, but you don't want it loose, right? So you want it so that it's kind of nice and sturdy. So that's good. You may have a resistor on here, and that just helps your um, current be more stable when your battery is fresher, which will help your instrument not drift as much, but it's not necessary. So for example, here's one with a resistor just kind of wound on it. And this is somewhere between a 60 and a 200 ohm resistor. It doesn't quite matter what it is, and we just wound it on here. But I'm not using that version for the moment, so I'll just use this one without the resistor. And then, which way does this go? Okay, this way, perfect. If you get it backwards, you're not going to blow it up. It just doesn't work. So you can flip this around to be the right way. Make sure the light's on. I'm going to try to land the little wires of the LED right in the clip kind of there so that it holds on there nicely. And I might need to kind of angle this and get a little creative with it. Ultimately, you don't want it to wiggle or fall apart or anything. You want it to be a little stable. And then that's the colorimeter part. Now we open up the multimeter. Okay, let's get the multimeter ready to use. So multimeters generally come with these leads that have little pointy ends on them. And it's designed so that you can touch different spots on your electronic circuit and measure various values of whatever. Not quite helpful for what we're doing, but hey, the cheap multimeters came that way. And so the black is common or ground, and so it goes into the bottom port here that says calm. And then the red one can go in different ports depending on what you're measuring. Right now we're measuring ohms of resistance, so it goes in the one with this omega, which happens to be the middle one on this particular multimeter. The top port here is just an unfused port if you're gonna measure high currents, which we're not doing. Okay, and then these ones have an on switch. Other multimeters, you rotate it out of a position that says off to the position you're gonna measure. And we're measuring resistance, which is again this omega symbol, which is for, stands for units of ohms. 
And these ones are not auto ranging. So that means as you twist this to different numbers, that's the different ranges that it can measure over. Ideally, you want the lowest range so that you have the most sensitivity. And so you want the smallest number that you can measure. But you also don't want it to um, go off scale. Right now, it's telling us um, there's a whole bunch of resistance because the electrical circuit is open. So you can test to make sure it's working by touching your two leads together. And it should read pretty close to 0. I'll bet you if I go down to 200 ohms here, it'll read, yeah, very close to 0. A little bit of resistance in the wires, and I'm kind of wiggling a bit. Perfect. Now we need to get these onto here, which is a little bit of a trick. Again, it'd be nicer if these had clips on them, but they don't, because we sent you this $7 multimeter. And so we're going to use these little alligator clips we sent you to kind of push these together. And this takes a little bit of work to make sure you get it all nice and tight. You might want to wrap this lead around, because you can bend it. It's no problem if you bend it at all. So you might want to wrap wrap it around here if you can. Doesn't really matter as long as you get it super sturdy. So I'm going to give that a little wrap. And then I'm going to take the clip and try to get the teeth of the clip right on the intersection of the test lead, the prong of the multimeter, and the wire. And then now I'll do that on the other side as well. Just kind of use this to bend. And you do want to get it right on the teeth. I got this a little farther off. I got it like back here, and then it just kind of slides if you're in this part. So you want this to be right on the teeth so that it doesn't slide back and forth as easily. OK. So now we're going to measure some resistance value. And that resistance value should change if you change the amount of light that's going in. Great. Um, it should definitely change if you do something like stick your finger down in here. Woo! OK, that works. All right. So now, what we're measuring is resistance. These devices change resistance with the amount of light that goes in. And so they happen to be convenient in our case because you will get a higher number on the display if your absorbance goes up. Now remember, absorbance is a unit that's inverse with transmittance. And also, there's a logarithm involved. But basically, if you absorb more light, there's less light hitting your detector. So therefore, there's more absorbance. So what these resistors do is when there's less light, the resistance value goes up. And so I'm going to cover this up with my hand and see how this went up to 1.92 and then let go back down to 1.9. OK, so less light, because the overhead light is not coming in, the value goes up. Perfect. Now again, check out the range. Um, is this range going to work for me? Well, it might work. We'll see how this goes. Because you want to be on the lowest number that actually works. It's probably 20K. In, in this case, it's 2,000. It depends on your photoresistor. They come in different ranges. We tried to send you ones with different ranges in your kit. OK, so now you get your cuvette ready for testing. And this depends on the lab you're doing. Generally, you need a blank. And so I'm going to put some distilled water in here and let it be the blank. And you only need to fill it. Oh, so that it kind of reaches to the second and a half to the third level of the Lego here, because you know where your light path is. You just need the liquid in your light path. And then you definitely want to put the cap on, because I knock these over on accident all the time. So you want the cap on so that when, not if, when you knock it over, you don't make a big mess. OK, also check to make sure there's no bubbles. So I'm good with no bubbles at the moment. If you have bubbles, you can kind of hold it and gently um, flick it with your hand or with a pen. That works pretty well. But try not to scratch up the side where the light goes through. Note that there's a clear side that is where we're going to do our measurements. And then there's a side that's not as clear, which is designed for you to hold it there. So I'm going to hold it by the side that's kind of etched or ridged and leave the clear sides nice and clean. It's also good practice to use a Kim wipe, which is a special scientific tissue, to wipe it off before you do your measurement. And so again, hold it by this part. Give it a little, a little wipe just to make sure there's nothing on the sides. And then now you want the clear part lined up with the light path, which is the line between the LED and your detector, and fit it in there. And now if it only goes in this far, you didn't do it right. You need to kind of angle it around until it goes all the way in. It should be nice and flat. And then put the little lid on. 
and then that's where you take your measurement. I noticed on mine that my lid is kind of hitting my wire back here, and so the nice thing is, since it's paper, you can adjust that if you need to. So I just ripped a little bit off so that I can set it here and not have it hit the wire that comes out. And if I'd bent it differently, we wouldn't have this problem. Okay, so now here's your number that you write down. This is the resistance. And then if you're gonna be specific, it's in unit of ohms. And then this one is up to 2000 ohms. Great, so this is the number of ohms you would write down. If I switch ranges, this is the 20K range, and then this is 1.93 kilo ohms because you're in 20K. So again, depends on your photoresistor, what you're gonna measure. And then you'll have some liquid here that you're gonna measure. Let me just put the dye solution in really quick. Okay, and so ultimately you alternate your blank, which tells you what the absorbance of pure light or pure water is, which should be no absorbance. So this gives you kind of a baseline for how light is moving through everything. And then you take this out, a little harder with the lid on, and then you put your other one in, and then you see a value that's different. And then now you write this number down. And then you use both your blank measurement and your sample measurement in calculating your transmittance, which then is used to calculate absorbance. Or you can kind of skip the transmittance step and do it all in one go. Now, again, a note about range is I'm over range if I'm back in 2000. Because less light is going through, because it's getting absorbed, that means my number is higher. And so I need to be in the 20K range. Great. So if I had accidentally taken the blank on the 2000 range, I would go back and try to take them on the same range. It shouldn't matter, but you never know. It's always good to just have everything as similar as possible in between all your measurements. So that's how you use the absorbent spectrometer, or the colorimeter, I should say. Now, to be technical, this is a colorimeter, and a spectrometer can work at different wavelengths. And this one's limited by the wavelength of the LED. So it is technically a colorimeter. But you'll, we're all used to working with instruments where you can select the wavelength, and so we'll probably call it a spectrometer many, many times. Great. So that's what you need to know if you have the kit from St. Mary's. Now, if you're building it without the insert, there's a couple extra Lego pieces you need. And to be honest, if I had figured this out early enough this semester, or in preparing for this semester, I would have done this um, in the first place and saved myself from having to 3D print a gazillion different um, of these little inserts. So now if you don't have the 3D printed insert, you use these little L-shaped pieces and they work actually pretty well for holding cuvettes. So they're these little one by twos that have an L shape. And you put them in here so they make, I'll show it out of place first. So they make a little kind of bed, a little U-shaped thing like that. And so I'm gonna put those down in here. I might need to pull my photoresistor off. Okay, so now I have a nice little place for my cuvette to sit. And then this goes on top of it. And then, the other modification we need to make is in a brick a little farther above. So give me just a second to build this the way we had it before. You might want a couple extra black Legos because you have now your second layer is exposed to your light path. Your next thing you need to do is put one of these pieces and I'll put in the comments of the video the part numbers for all the Lego pieces. So this has two little holes on the side and it allows me to park it right above the photoresistor. So it sits there. And then put a little smooth plate, or a tile this is called. And this you want to be black. I didn't have a black one, so I took a white one and co colored it with Sharpie. It's a little one by, see it's white on the back. It's a little one by two piece that is flat. You don't want the bumps on it, otherwise your cuvette's gonna get all mashed up. And it's not gonna fit. And that goes right on here. So now your cuvette goes in and it kind of slides along this tile that you put in and then sits in between the two little L-shaped pieces down on the bottom. And that's the modification. Then that leads you to a slightly different construction plan for the pieces that go on the top, just because 
you have to put a one by two in a different spot, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But that is relatively straightforward. You can build it up like you did before. There you go. And now you can use it just like we did before and pull the color room or pull the, excuse me. See, I told you about dropping the cuvettes. Pull the cuvette in and out. Remember where the light path goes. And then this one, it's a little trickier. So it can get stuck on top of that tile that you put in. That one's a little easier to see because it sticks way out. It can get stuck on top of the little fence. That one's a little harder to see because your cuvette is almost in the right place. But you do need to make sure it goes all the way down in and is flush with the top. So if you're trying to put your little lid on and you're hitting the cuvette sticking up, you know that something's wrong. Well, there you have it. Enjoy your colorimeter.